Good morning. Welcome to another week of the Park Avenue Church of Christ worship video service here on the Park Avenue channel. We are so blessed that if you're able to watch and uh, that you're do it, able to do it safely in your home. And given the circumstances, we're still doing providing these videos. Uh, <clears throat> but we do look forward to the time when it will be over and that we will be all be together and that we can fellowship and worship together and sing songs and maybe even have a dinner every now and then. I'd be plum tickled to death with that. I don't know about you, but sit back as we, in our minds and in our hearts, direct them toward our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as we celebrate what's been done for us it makes it possible for us to live a different kind of life. Next, we will have some singing, a lesson, and then communion. God bless. See you in a few. Good morning, church. Last week, we spoke about <clears throat> dealing with our uncomfortable feelings. We all have them. We all have them in various moments and times of our life. 
whether they be through conflicts we have with other people or circumstances that happen to be going on in our present time. Uh, whether that be the world that we live in as far as the conditions of it or things that happen that come along like this past week. Um, there are people suffering from flooding and there are, no doubt there are people dealing with deaths. No doubt there are people dealing with illnesses. All these various things come along and bring about uh, in some form or another feelings <clears throat> that we're not really like or comfortable with. And this past week I asked you, did you notice the moments that your nest was stirred? That you had those uncomfortable feelings? I truly believe that we're always dealing with our nest being stirred. In various states, from, from the extreme to the small, if we're paying attention to them. You know, Paul talks about them in ver various letters to the churches. He talks about this idea of suffering, of dealing with things, of uh, what life looks like in relationship to what we're going through. In 2 Corinthians chapter 1, if you'd like to turn there with me, I'm going to begin reading in verses, verse 3. And this is a small little section, and I've it is very deep in lessons for us today. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. For just as we share abundantly in the sufferings of Christ, so also our comforts abound through Christ. If we are distressed, it is for your comfort and salvation. If we are comforted, it is for your comfort, which produces in you patient endurance of the same sufferings we suffer. And our hope for you is firm, because we know that just as you share in our sufferings, so also you share in our comfort. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about the troubles we experienced in the province of Asia. We were under great pressure far beyond our ability to endure, so that we despaired of life itself. Indeed, we felt we had received the sentence of death. But this happens that we might not rely on ourselves, but on God, who raises the dead. He has delivered us from such a deadly peril, and He will deliver us again. On Him we have set our hope that He will continue to deliver us as you help us by your prayers then many will give thanks on our behalf for the gracious favor granted us in answer to the prayers of many. It seems that in our present world system, strength is valued over everything else. We look up to the powerful, the strong, the rich, the beautiful, the talented, the smartest, and the most successful. Our society looks upon those individuals as they have the answers and they've got the path. And there is an appeal to that. It, there truly is. And, and, and I'm, I understand. I deal with it myself. But also, our world looks upon the troubles of our lives as ways to show how strong we are or to show how bad other people have been to us. We blame or we overcome by our own bootstraps in the circumstances that come about in our lives. Two things generally happen. Well, more than two, but two that I want to talk about. One, we blame someone for what's going on. We've been wronged. Someone did this to us. Politicians did this to us. The, uh, our neighbor did this to us. Family did this to us. Parents did this to us. Children did this. We had we're readily available to give reasons and blame to the circumstances of our lives. And sometimes God gets in that blame category too. And then we have the other spectrum where we have those <clears throat> who when things come along, uh, and it's not like they rise to the challenge of themselves, but because when they do 
get through the problem. They then accredited themselves as able to accomplish and overcome anything. And oftentimes, our world plays that violin on both those scenarios. And it's, when we don't understand it, sometimes we go to the blame game. Then other times when we uh, get through it, we, <laughs> we congratulate ourselves on a job well done, on how we were able to move ourselves through those things. Missing completely the point or the purpose sometimes of these things that we go through. You know, when we read this passage, we fail to see what Paul is really talking about because the world is shouting in our ears these other ideas. And Paul's not making excuses or elevating suffering. He's not saying, let's <laughs> celebrate when we suffer. That's not the point because I know there's that form of recognition today also. Paul is sharing the benefit of the fire. There's an explanation given that, Paul, that Peter talks about in, in, in his book where he talks about where we're refined in the fire that what happens is it takes away the impurities. This is the process that Paul is talking about. These things that we go through, not that God is causing them, but God's going to use them. We live in a dangerous and corrupt world. And he knows that. And he knows that we're influenced by many things, by society, by friends, by education, by TV, by all these things. And periodically we get confused on what's important and what's not important. A man by the name of Henry Nguyen had some such experiences. But he found something else in his experience. Henry Nguyen was a priest who uh, taught at Harvard and Yale. He was very knowledgeable, served on numerous, numerous mission uh, trips, did all kinds of charitable work. But he came to a point where he had served to help one group of people and in the process something bad had happened to one of the individuals. And this young man whose name was Adam became a full-fledged paraplegic unable to do anything, 25 years of age. He couldn't, I mean, he couldn't do anything. He, the slobber that ran down the side of his face, he had, he could stop it. So this man who was well known, well looked about, decided to start taking care of him. And in that process of submitting himself to someone else's suffering, he found something going on. He found something that was more important than he could have ever imagined. So many times, we don't connect the dots on the suffering that happens. And he took care of this young man for a long time. Here's what he came to the conclusion. Maybe one problem underlying the scandals of Christian superstars is that we distort the kingdom of God by training our spotlight not on the servants but on the stars. Henry Nguyen said, Keep your eyes on the one who refuses to turn stones into bread. Jump from great heights or rule with great temporal power. Keep your eyes on the one who says, Blessed are the poor, the gentle, those who mourn, those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Blessed are the merciful, the peacemakers, and those who are persecuted in the cause of uprightness. Keep your eyes on the one who is poor with the poor, weak with the weak and rejected with rejected. That one is the source of all peace. In other words, keep your eyes on the, go on the servant, not the star. The Gospels repeat one saying of Jesus more than any other. Whoever wants to save his life will lose it.
but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Truly, the way up is down. You and I experienced many things in our lives this past week as I talked about uh, the flooding. There were people who was experiencing you know, devastation from losing items and uh, possessions they worked all, maybe a lifetime for. And we can take those things and we can blame or we can take pride in our accomplishments up through them or there's one other. We can take the moment and use it to ground us and make us into something different. In those previous verses that I read to you from 2 Corinthians chapter 1, I'm going to bring up some points here and I want us to take a look at them that Paul's very adamantly bringing about. Verse 4, Whoever comforts us in all our trouble so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. Man, when was the last time you looked at the problems you have as an opportunity to help others? It's the last thing that pops in our mind when we're going through whatever we're going through. We're looking for other people to come run to our rescue. And there will be people that will do that. And there will be God who's there comforting us. But the point Paul is bringing up here is do not forget, look at, your, look at this situation in a futuristic view. What are you going to be able to use this moment to help someone else? There are, there are circumstances people have gone through that I can't even begin to imagine or understand. But I, have, I know people who have gone through things that they can help people with that I can't even begin to help people with. We all have a story to tell and a place to help someone from our experiences and from the things that we've gone through that helps us help those who are in trouble. Because is that not what Jesus did for us? Did He not experience those things so that He could help us? Verse 5, for just as we share abundantly in the sufferings of Christ, so also our comfort abounds through Christ. You know, Paul always wanted to remind everyone, and, and I, we needed to hear this, that Christ's sufferings were not just purely ever going to be just on him. We were going to suffer because of our relationship with Christ. And someone will say, well, how, why? Because we have issues that need to be resolved and fixed. And Jesus, though he didn't, took those sufferings without ever having done anything wrong. Jesus suffered on purpose in order to help us. Now, I'm not asking anybody to go out there and, and permanently, uh, intentionally hurt themselves or suffer some things just so they can prove a point. No. Life has its own, is a dangerous place, as we know. It will present to you, what you some suffering. But just keep in mind, in that suffering, it's a lesson. And here's the thing that come with it. Paul said, the comfort that abounds through Christ. How, how does that? In Christ, we see what happens. We get a glimpse of what can happen internally to us. When we let go of the blame, the pride, the parts of the things that we go through and look at them through a different spectrum as Christ. Nothing we experience is more than what our Lord dealt with. Everything that Jesus accomplished, He, he traveled through suffering. Verse 6, If we are distressed, it is for your comfort and salvation. If we are comforted, it is for your comfort, which produces in you patience, endurance of the same sufferings we suffer. And our hope for you is firm because we know that just as you share in our sufferings, so also you share in our comfort. One of the most poignant moments right here Paul is bringing up is Paul is reminding that we are in this thing together. 
None of us travel alone. Or we shouldn't be. When you and I go through things, there are going to be those around us to help us. Blame won't solve it. And pride, the only thing pride does is push us away from other people. We want to do it ourselves. But Paul is saying, we're in this thing together. When, when, you're, when, a, when you're, as a parent, your child's in trouble, I mean, sometimes we let them work through it, but we're there helping in ways sometimes they don't always know about. At the same time, family members are there. And as followers of Jesus Christ, that's what we need to be. These uncomfortable moments draw us together. They create companionship and devotion and love toward one another that may not help happen any other way. In fact, think about this as you study the book of Acts. All the turmoil that happened, all the deaths, all the suffering, all the things that happened in the first century, what did it do? It calls the church to grow, and that's not the point, it, but it created something that somebody else wanted to be a part of. Imagine that. We are a group of people who, not that we celebrate our sufferings, but we understand the point of them. Because most of the world doesn't. The world is angry over suffering. Second point Paul makes into this, our hope is firm. Our hope is directed straight at our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Because we saw what He went through. We saw what He did. And we saw where He came through. And that promise has been given to us. You know, hope is our anchor in the storms of life. In Matthew chapter 5, what Henry Nguyen reminded us, I would like to read for us at this moment. And I want you to see the condition of those that Jesus is calling blessed. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets, you will, who will be before you. Our nest stirs because we were never intended to be the Lord, but to be a servant. All those conditions that came that I read through through the Beatitudes were circumstances that you and I deal with constantly. And blame is not the path, and pride is not the path. The path is recognizing the place you are in God. We were never intended to be Lord and King of lives, but servants to lives. One of the most amazing aspects of understanding God is that God doesn't treat us as we're lowly. He loves us and does everything He can for us to create circumstances by which we grow in relationship with Him and with each other. Jesus demonstrated, as Paul says, you know, if, uh, you know, Jesus is the perfect replica of who God is. And everything that Jesus did was representative of what God wants to do with us. And we may be overwhelmed because we're looking at this wrong. If we're looking at it from the blame or we get overwhelmed because we're trying to fix it and solve all of our problems for ourselves, 
We don't recognize it. Down there in that verse 8, Paul said something. We don't want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about the troubles we experienced in the province of Asia. We were under great pressure, far beyond our ability to endure, so that we despaired of life itself. Indeed, we felt we'd received the sentence of death, but this happened that we might not rely on ourselves, but on God, who raises the dead. The things that we go through in life sometimes help focus our minds on what we are missing in our lives. We don't necessarily rejoice to the point that we're going through things because sometimes those things are bad things. But we understand there's not anything that anyone's going through that someone else hasn't already gone through there's nothing new under the sun you and I are dealing with here. We are called to be like our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And we're going to have to suffer. It, suffer. But in the process, there will be a comfort that comes that you and I won't always recognize. It will as we found out in this past year, 2020, it was funny people talking about how we no longer looked up to athletes, we never longer looked up to celebrities, we no longer looked up to millionaires. All of a sudden, truck drivers and nurses and people who checked out your groceries at the grocery store, the person who delivered the package to your house, we looked at them as they had more value than we ever saw before. That's what God's always been talking about. Look up to the ones who serve others more than the ones who are being served. God bless. Look forward to seeing you again next week. Have a great day. I come to the garden alone
every week we gather together as a community as best we can given those who can but those who can't we still in a spiritual sense participate in remembering the suffering of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and what that brought to us as I talked about early everything that Jesus accomplished for us was done through suffering he suffered being being here he he suffered through the death the crucifixion through the tortures that he went through through the relationships that he had with people who disowned him and who ignored him through the very uh, humiliation of being him but in that process he opened a door and a path for you and I that makes it possible for us to pass on to another side pass over into a relationship with our Lord and Savior and with God our Father and we every Sunday remember that moment so that we never forget so that we never lose sight of what's really important and today we remember the body that was broken with the bread and the blood that was offered for us in the cup from the servant of servants our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ bow with me please our Father we approach your throne of grace ever mindful of just what has been done for us but Father we lose sight of it and we get caught up in the, our worlds and forget about the importance of just what has been done Father as we partake of this cup and we partake of this bread may we be reminded to the extent of just how much your love and devotion toward us was shown so that we never forget no matter what we go we're going through. And it's through your Son's name that we pray. And amen. Look forward to seeing you again next week. God bless. Have a great day.